I've heard from so many Coloradans who want me to run for the United States Senate. I intend to give that some serious thought. He is out in the bid for president. Could he be in the race for Senate? We look back on how former Governor John Hickenlooper has felt about a Senate run in the past. Big foam blocks piled up on US 36 near that giant sinkhole. A Nine News viewer questions what they're for and offers up her own suggested answer. Why CDOT says she's smarter than everybody. This is essentially our NFL. You know, these are the pros of our industry. And it's all about speed. We're not just talking 40 times. Some of the country's fastest fingers and the people they are attached to battle to be crowned champion of the court reporters. Next. Right now, people near Deer Creek Park are being evacuated because of a fire near Grizzly and Bear Claw Drives. More than 280 homes have been sent a code red alert to get out. The fire started a little bit before 5 o'clock and has been sending a huge plume of smoke up into the air. People have been seeing it or been seeing it for miles. Some people have been able to spot it from far, pretty far away. South Valley Park, Hildebrand Ranch Park, and Deer Creek Canyon Park are all closed because of this. We're going to keep an eye on that throughout the evening. Today, Colorado Strings Police released body camera video showing an officer-involved shooting from 11 days ago. This video shows officers responding to a call about an armed robbery confronting two suspects. That is when Devon Bailey runs. Reach for your waist. We're going to just check and make sure that you don't have a weapon, all right? Hands up! Hands up! Hands up! Get your hands up! Get your hands up! Get your hands up! So that full video is on 9news.com if you care to see it. 9 wants to know investigator Chris Vanderveen looked over this entire tape. And Chris, I think a lot of people are looking for clarity in this video, and it's clarity that's tough to find. We did get some clarity today because what we learned today is that the officers did, in fact, shoot Devon Bailey in the back. The real question is that doesn't by itself make it an improper shooting. The Supreme Court has said, in essence, that you can, in fact, shoot somebody in the back if they represent an imminent threat. And that's the term that's very key here. Did Bailey represent an imminent threat? If they believe that he did, then the, justif then, then the shooting is justified. When you're watching that video, we're talking about the idea of imminent threat. We see his hands down low as officers are yelling, hands up, hands up, before that shooting occurred. And people are seeing two very different things when they look at that video. There's one question when he's, he's reaching down towards his waist. Is he keeping his shorts up or is he reaching for a gun? Obviously, this is not the luxury that police officers have in that moment. This was a shooting that took place within two seconds of him running from those police officers. They believed at least... Uh, in theory, that there was that imminent threat, but it will be up to the district attorney down in Colorado Springs to sort of make that final conclusion. This is the largest piece of evidence. I think a lot of people think they can make the conclusion based on this, but this is still going to be a long investigation. There's a lot of things that need to be said and done, and these type of investigations, you have to keep in mind that we got these body camera footage videos very, very shortly, within 11 days. That's essentially unprecedented with these type of cases. They have to look at the autopsy, all sorts of other things, and it can take weeks, if not months, for the DA to reach his final conclusion. And obviously after that, it could potentially go to a grand jury or the DA could decide. The family right wants this case to go immediately to a grand jury and bypass the DA process altogether. That's, that's, a, that's a long shot in this case, but that's certainly what they're asking for right now. They're also pushing for an investigation on the state level, not necessarily an investigation on they the local level. They want the AG, Phil Weiser, to get involved as well. Yeah. All right. Chris Vanderveen, this is a story that's going to keep on going. We appreciate well, it. Thank you. Uh, it appears the efforts to save Tom's Diner are over. Community, Denver's Community Planning Department told us today that the applicants who wanted landmark preservation status for the diner withdrew their request this morning. The city will issue a certificate of non-historic status tomorrow, meaning the owner can apply to demolish it at any time in the next five years. They had applied to save that building, which went against the desire of the owner, Tom Messina. He'd planned to sell it to a developer and retire with the money from that sale. Now, the applicants tell us they have been talking to Tom behind the scenes, and they are happy with what his developer plans to do with that building. And today, I'm ending my campaign for president, but I will never stop believing that America can only move forward when we work together. The trivia answer is 164 days. Former Governor John Hickenlooper's presidential campaign lasted 164 days. Our Marshall Zellinger was up at 4.30 in the morning to break the news back on March 4th. Today he is breaking down what Hickenlooper has said about running for Senate, which I guess could be another 4.30 a.m. announcement. I've heard from so many Coloradans who want me to run for the United States Senate. They remind me how much is at stake for our country. 
and our state. I intend to give that some serious thought. Hang on. Serious thought? It's not like former mayor, former governor, and now former presidential candidate John Hickenlooper hasn't had time to think about possibly being future Senator Hickenlooper, seeing as it was one of the most popular questions during his presidential campaign, like Saturday on CNN. As soon as I start talking about Senate or some other possibility, not only do I get distracted, but my, my team gets distracted. I don't rule anything out, but I, I don't. Right now, I'm not even thinking about it. I mean, literally right. not thinking about it. Eight days before that interview on PBS's firing line, he talked about why putting teams together as an executive appeals to him. That's when I feel alive. That's where I feel I add the most value. I feel like that's my calling. A July 17th tweet by a CBS News reporter in Iowa documented a voter's question to Hickenlooper about why he's not challenging Senator Cory Gardner. I don't think they need me, Hickenlooper is quoted, and I do believe I will do a better job at beating Donald Trump. And all the way back in February, when we were following Hickenlooper's campaign in Iowa before he officially announced his candidacy, he was quoted in Politico with this headline, I'm not cut out to be a senator. Senators don't build teams. Senators sit and debate in small groups. I'm a doer. As with all politicians, Hickenlooper has left himself what I'll call a squishy area. I don't believe, and I'm sure if it exists, I'll hear about it on Twitter in a minute, I don't believe Hickenlooper has ever flat out said no, he's not going to run for Senate. But he's got a lot of walking back to do. And if he wants to run for Senate, his possible websites have already been saved. <laughs> a PR guy who has done work previously with Hickenlooper has already saved Hick, the number four, Senate.com. Hick and Looper, number four, Senate.com. Hick and Looper for Senate with the word for and Hick for Senate also spelled out. I feel like this is the movie Big. Sometimes she writes the hyphen, sometimes she spells the hyphen. Curtis Hubbard bought these domain names but has not talked with Hick and Looper since January. I asked Hubbard if he's heard from other current Democratic Senate candidates to, you know, back off. I have not. Uh, and I have, I have tremendous respect for many of them. I think that they would all acknowledge that John Hickenlooper worry to get in the race would be a uh, presumptive uh, and formative front runner. Would the other candidates say that? I know, Steve, you're about to get into that in a minute, but for the time being, there's going to be a lot of crow eating, I, I feel, and walking mm -hmm. back if Hickenlooper does want to enter the Senate race, because that's going to be, I can already see the political ads, the dramatic music, and all the things we just showed you as to he didn't want to run for Senate, Senate's not good enough for him, and that'll be the negative political. I'm just ads. curious if you could take the old president stuff and just dump the word Senate, I'm running for <laughs> Senate, over it. If that not, would save some know, money. We'll do, we'll do that if he doesn't. That would save some money. It's a good way to do it. Marshall Zollinger, thank you. So we reached out to some of the other candidates looking to replace Senator Cory Gardner in the U.S. Senate. Several of them gave us the old no comment. We did get responses from some, though. Mike Johnston's campaign says, quote, I respect the governor's decision to leave the presidential race. He has led a distinguished career of service that has changed Colorado for the better. And as both friend and as someone who has faced the same decision, I understand the enormous choice he will make in the coming weeks about whether or not to join the Senate race. State Senator Angela Williams says he spent his time in Iowa running for president and as governor working and campaigning against bold progressive solutions that will move Colorado and the country forward. If he is going to switch gears and run for the Senate, he has a lot to explain to Colorado voters. This won't be a coronation. Former Colorado House Speaker Andrew Romanoff's campaign confirmed he has no plans of dropping out with the Hickenlooper announcement. They released a statement to us saying, We are running out of time to rescue our planet, repair our democracy, and restore the American dream. We need leaders who will fight for a Green New Deal, Medicare for all, and an economy that works for everyone. That's the kind of senator I will be. Alice Madden's campaign got back to us as well. She says, ultimately, it's up to John to decide if he wants to run. But I am putting 100% of my efforts toward becoming Colorado's first female senator and true clean energy champion. Our next question comes from a viewer named Jenny. I drive to Broomfield every day and am super intrigued by the massive foam blocks that are now sitting by the 36 sinkhole. Would love for you to determine their purpose. I'm assuming they're used for support or filler. Sky9 actually flew over the foam blocks that Jenny was referring to earlier this week. We were curious too, so we took her question to the chief engineer for CDOT, Josh Lapley, who was impressed. 
Your viewer is, is smarter than everybody, actually, because that's exactly what those foam blocks are for. Those foam blocks are going to go in place of the fill that we would normally put in, and there's a couple reasons for that. We talked about there's this clay layer underneath that anytime you put a lot of weight on top of it, starts to become questionable, right? And so if we put it back with foam block, we alleviate some of that weight. The other uh, benefit of having that foam block is we don't have to worry about settlement. If we put 30 feet of fill or dirt on top of that and try to compact it, no matter how tough we compact that, it's going to settle over time. Those foam blocks will not. There you go, Jenny. You are smarter than everybody. If you have a question, email it to next at 9news.com or get our attention with the hashtag HeyNext. These are the best of the best. Uh, one of our competitors is the Guinness World Record holder. You have to type 225 words per minute just to be a court reporter. Some of the nation's fastest squared off in Denver today. The Hick for President campaign feels like it's over before it really even began. We look back at some of the highlights of a pretty quiet five months next. Former Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper's bid to be the Democratic nominee for president is over, and we felt it was our duty to share some of the highlights from the past five months, one week and one day of his campaign. Are you a capitalist? I think the answer is yes. <laughs> hey! uh, I am. You know, more than that, I'm an entrepreneur. I think right. that's the best part of, uh, of being a capitalist. If we want to beat Donald Trump and achieve big, progressive goals, socialism is not the answer. If we're going to force Americans to make these radical changes, they're not going to go along. You, you throw your hands up, but you, right. you have an impact. Oh, I can do it. You have an the plans. Us the highlights of the 2019 John Hickenlooper campaign for president. <laughs> A break from the severe weather along the Front Range today. Hot, windy, and dry. So, of course, now we're thinking about fire danger. And we do have that fire burning in Jefferson County in the Deer Creek open space area. Up high, we've got a few thunderstorms with a bit of lightning after a day with highs in the mid-90s. We're typically in the mid to upper 80s this time of year. We are tracking a couple of strong thunderstorms coming out of Wyoming into Nebraska. And they've had a history of producing two to three inch diameter hail, such as this cell, which moved through Scotts Bluff. Severe thunder storm warning has just canceled out. This system is moving really quickly toward the southeast, but Julesburg, Holyoke, and Sterling, the potential for hail in the next half hour is still there. Most of the activity will stay confined to areas north and east of Colorado as the main moisture flow kind of cut off right now, but it returns tomorrow along with the weak front to the north. So we'll track isolated storms tonight and scattered activity tomorrow afternoon, and temperatures will come down a little bit as well with a wind shift by about 2 or 3 o'clock. Concerns for high fire danger, red flag warning out for most of western Colorado on Friday. Tonight, partly cloudy, 60 degrees. Tomorrow, another hot, dry day, high of 88. An afternoon storm likely both Friday and Saturday. Temperatures mid-90s for Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. And don't forget to check out the big, bright, full moon, Steve. It is gorgeous, as Robert Austin has shown us here. The fast and furiously accurate. Some of the country's quickest court reporters face off to see who has the speediest fingers. And how are you going to do Philip Lindsay like that, EA Sports? The next crew now is getting the Madden treatment. It's a competition that would make Mavis Beacon proud. Let me know if you get that reference. Some of the fastest fingers in the West and the rest of the country are in Denver this week for the national real-time competition put on by the National Court Reporters Association. The competition judges contestants on their ability to accurately type down dialogue in real time. Our Corky Scholl brought his camera out to the Colorado Convention Center to see if his lens could keep up with these speed demons. 
This is the literary leg of the 2019 National Real-Time Contest. This is essentially our NFL. It will be read at 200 words per minute. You know, these are the pros of our industry. Well, this is the National Court Reporters Association. Court reporting and captioning. It's the art of capturing the spoken word as it happens. Do you have an independent recollection of this incident? Yes. My name is Kathy Cortapassi. My job is to keep up with everything that is said. My name is Catherine Thomas. I'm from Caseyville, Illinois, and I do live captioning. My my name is Mike Hensley, and I'm a freelance deposition reporter in Northern California. Ready? Begin. Today's competition is our real-time competition. What were your other duties? And the way I explain it basically to people is to see who is the most accurate instantaneously. Correct. It would be either a sheet of paper or City Hall would contact us. Speed helps. It's very important for you to have that skill. Entry level speed in order to work as a court reporter is 225 words per minute. After you stopped working for Mr. Larkin, were you charged in an indictment with federal crime? Yes. There are countless things that I love about this profession. I love the challenge of getting everything right the first time. I, I get to help people every day. I was at home because it was after hours. We're all competing against ourselves. We're not competing against each other. Even though we're ranked and scored, there's never a moment where you think, I'm better than you. We're all working towards the same goal. So it's... This is the end of the exam. Fun like I've never had in any other kind of competitive arena. So I thoroughly enjoy it. <laughs> that looks like fun. The winners will be announced on Saturday. So every year when the Madden NFL video game is released, there are usually a good amount of players who are upset with how the game developers rank their abilities. Well, the Broncos have an issue with EA Sports for a whole different reason. Just look at how the game depicted Broncos running back Philip Lindsay. The team tweeted out a video of a chat between Lindsay and one of the people who works on the game. They say, so EA, Madden NFL, we need to talk uh, with a flash of the side-by-side -side comparison of Lindsay and his game avatar. So clearly it's not even close, right? Uh, great head of hair on Philip Lindsay, not even showing up in the avatar. Uh, it's his most distinctive feature. It's bad, so bad that we wanted to create our own terrible Madden avatar. So here's one, uh, the one and only Kyle Clark, uh, next anchor, beer aficionado. Looks like a caricature of a newsman from a video game. But hey, you know, it's still got the pretty snazzy sports jacket, if you can see it. Uh, we did Marshall 2. <laughs> this one will give me nightmares. We did Marshall 2. Uh, uh, but, you know, like, they got the glasses part right. They apparently didn't have time to give him the tie clip combo and all that stuff. And, and then uh, here I am. I look sort of nightmarish, you know, like a character from The Sims. Just th thankful that they put a beard on me. I hope that's what my beard really doesn't look like. Look at the baby face, Steve, there on the, on the left-hand side of your screen. I don't think it, I would be very intimidating out there. Uh, so a few months back, we brought you the story of a man running across the country raising money for kids in foster care. We'll get an update on his progress next. So we last caught up with Noah Friedenberg back in June. He was in Colorado running across the country to raise money for kids in foster care. He started at his home in Los Angeles and made it to New York yesterday. It was just after midnight East Coast time on Wednesday when he made it to the Atlantic Ocean. He says he was really, really tired and already thinking about getting back home to his bed. His coast to coast trip totaled 3,200 miles and took him 121 days. He raised only 8,500 of his $121,000 goal, but he hopes his appearance on some news stations will help get him up to that total. So uh, we asked how the, he felt when he finished racing. He's been taking ibuprofen every day, so his body doesn't hurt too much. Now that he's stopped, he's literally feeling his 121 day journey everywhere. Finish with your feedback now. Stephanie wrote in to say, wow, go an old school tech tonight. Oregon Trail and Mavis Beacon in the same newscast. Yes, yeah, Stephanie, it's, it's kind of like a grade school computer class in here. We'll see you next time. <laughs>